Hello Internet, my name is Lance Lefbeer. Uh, I'm recording this on a Google Glass device and we are going to do a video on GPS satellite orbits. Well, all satellites really. So this is the Earth and it rotates this way. Now the Earth's most obvious satellite is the Moon, represented by this softball. The diameter of the Moon is about the same as the width of North America. So now how far away do you think the Moon is from the Earth? Nope. 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 Sorry, I had to move to a different room to really show you this. So this is the same Earth. This is the same moon. How far away is it? Nope, still more. Yep, keep going. There it is, 30 times the diameter of the Earth. That's how far away the moon is from the Earth. Quite a distance, isn't it? Now to put some actual numbers to this, the diameter of the Earth is about 8,000 miles. The distance from the Earth to the moon is about 240,000 miles. As for man-made satellites, there are a variety of orbits they can be placed in. Some are as close as 250 miles out, which is about right there. Some are as far as 22,000 miles out, which are about right there. There are a few beyond that distance, but not very many. There's just not much reason to put stuff out there. The closer a satellite is to the Earth, the stronger the Earth's gravitational pull will be on that satellite. So objects located close to the Earth have to orbit quickly around the Earth, whereas objects located farther away take longer to go around the Earth. The baseline for that is out here at about 22,000 miles, and at that distance it takes one day to go all the way around the Earth. The Moon, at 30 times the diameter of the Earth, like way, way out there, takes 27 days to go around the Earth. On the other end of the spectrum, the International Space Station, which lives at 250 miles up, that thing orbits the Earth 16 times a day. One of the most common orbits satellites are placed in is geosynchronous, and that is, exists out here at 22,236 miles, where it takes one day to orbit the Earth. Most of the geosynchronous satellites are also geostationary. What that means is that in addition to being exactly 22,236 miles out, they're also located on the same orbital plane as the equator. Now what that does is that satellite effectively stays in the same spot in the sky as the Earth rotates. This is used for satellite television, Omnistar, WAS, TerraStar, things like that. A bunch of communication satellites all live in geostationary orbit. From the ground, that satellite is always in the same spot in the sky, hence the name geostationary. There are satellites that are geosynchronous but not geostationary. That means they still take 24 hours to go around the Earth, but they don't do it on the equatorial plane. They're on an inclined plane. So a geostationary satellite would orbit something like that. A geosynchronous but not geostationary satellite may orbit on a plane that's like that. As I said earlier, there are satellites out beyond geosynchronous, but not many because there's just not really a good reason to put stuff out there usually. Most of the satellites used for global positioning, such as GPS and GLONASS, are placed in an orbit closer to Earth than geosynchronous. GPS is at an altitude of 12,500 miles, which is about half the distance to the geosynchronous satellites. Because it's closer to Earth, they orbit the Earth more frequently than the geosynchronous. In this case of GPS, it's approximately every 12 hours they orbit the Earth. The GPS system is currently comprised of 32 satellites. Those satellites are divided into six orbital planes equally spaced around the Earth. Each orbital plane crosses the equator at an angle of approximately 55 degrees. So those orbits look something like this, although farther out to be to scale. Now for some of the weirder stuff. The habitable part of our atmosphere is only about four miles thick, where the air is still thick enough for us to breathe. However, the atmosphere doesn't just stop at some altitude. It just keeps going, but getting thinner and thinner, out to about 500 miles out. The neat part is we have satellites that are inside that zone. The International Space Station is one of them. The cool part is anything inside that area, as it orbits the Earth, it runs into air molecules, which cause drag and slow it down. Over time, if not given more power, eventually those satellites will fall back to the Earth and burn up on re-entry. It's like, like having a built-in expiration date on those satellites. One weird satellite orbit is called Sun Synchronous, where the satellites go across the North and South Poles. If this is aligned correctly with the Sun, that satellite is always in view of the Sun, and so it never is in the shade behind the Earth. Sometimes they do that to keep the solar panels charging continually. Sometimes they do that so that 
from the view of that so, uh, satellite, half of the Earth would be in the sun, half would be in the shade all the time. Another unusual orbit is called highly elliptical. And in this instance, the satellite gets closer and farther from the Earth throughout its orbit. It also speeds up and slows down. So for example, it would go something like this. The reason for doing this is it maximizes the amount of time that that satellite is directly overhead the far northern or southern hemisphere. It's used a lot by countries like Russia because they have a hard time seeing satellites over the equator. It's also used uh, in the US by Sirius Satellite Radio. Most of the satellites that are up there rotate around the Earth that general direction. Some go up, some go down. They have different inclinations, but they're mostly going that direction. The reason for that is just it's cheaper. When the Earth is rotating this direction and you have a satellite that needs to be rotating some direction at a certain speed, you've already got a head start on it because it's already rotating from the Earth. It is, however, possible to send rockets that direction. It just takes more fuel to do so. There aren't very many in that rotation, but there are some, and most of them have come from a country called Israel. And the reason Israel does that and chooses to spend more money on fuel is because when that rocket goes up, there are fuel tanks on it that get shed off the rocket as they get emptied. And those fuel tanks fall back to the Earth. And they have found it's a lot better to have them fall into the Mediterranean Sea than it is to have them fall into Syria and Iraq and Iran. That seems like a good move, doesn't it? <laughs>